Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 331. Instagram is not a sales platform. Instagram is a connection platform. Attention gifters, bakers, crafters, and makers. Pursuing your dream can be fun. Whether you have an established business or are looking to start one now, you are in the right place. This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, helping you turn your skill into a flourishing business. Join us for an episode packed full of invaluable guidance, resources, and the support you need to grow your gift biz. Here is your host, gift biz gal, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue. How are you doing today? Hope all is well in your neck of the woods. I'm in town this week, but headed off to Tampa next week. Not sure yet if timing works out to do a meetup, but if you're interested, direct message me and I'll include you in the plans as they develop. We'd either meet right in Tampa or in San Antonio. Yes, <laughs> there is such a place in Florida. It's about 30 miles southwest of Tampa. So, any interest? Let me know. To start off with today, I have a big announcement, a podcast switch of sorts. I'm planning on doing a test to switch the air dates of the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast to see if there's a more convenient schedule based on your lifestyle. Given that about 70% of small handmade product businesses are a part time venture, I know that many of you have 9 to 5 jobs or another part time job. That means Monday mornings may not be the best day to drop this show. I just don't know. I'm thinking you may have more time on the weekends to listen and possibly even implement the new learnings versus at the start of a week. Some of you have told me as much, so let's run a test, just like I always suggest you do in your business. Beginning with next week's podcast episode, I'm going to conduct this four-week test. Instead of airing the shows on Monday and Thursday, I'll be publishing the main show on Saturday with tips and talk on the following Wednesday. They're of course available to you anytime after that initial air date, just as always. But let's see what happens. Any feedback you have on this, one way or another, is of course always welcome. It's also kind of fun considering the topic for the first Saturday show. More on that and a huge hint at the end of the show here today. For now, let's move on to the show today. We're talking to the boss lady in sweatpants, all about Instagram, and we're taking it from the top. Gosh, this social media platform has become a powerhouse, and to some, it's getting really complicated. I mean, there's feed posting, highlights, stories, IGTV, and reels. What? How do you figure all this out, especially if you're new to the platform? So I want you to relax, take a deep breath, and we'll break it down into manageable pieces by going back to the basics of setup and strategy. Because if you don't have those two things right, nothing else is going to bring you the results that you want. With that, let's jump right into the show. Today, I have joining us Allison Scholes, and you're going to love the name of her company. Are you ready? Boss Lady in Sweatpants. So perfect, right? <laughs> Allison helps mompreneurs build their Instagram presence through coaching, creative copy, and content. On her podcast called Social Media for Mompreneurs, she guides busy moms on how to build their brand online in just minutes a day, even when those minutes are super hard to come by. Allison believes social media should be fun and easy, not daunting. With her sassy and fun personality, mixed with her creativity and love for sweatpants and coffee, she's able to deliver simple and creative tools that help mompreneurs boost their business with confidence and ease. Allison, we need you so much. Welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Hi, Sue. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. And just the words you choose to use bring a certain vibe that makes me feel so good already about what we're going to talk about. So I can't wait to dive <laughs> in. But before we do, I'm going to ask you my traditional question here. And that is for all our listeners and myself, because we're all creatives. 
to get to know you in a little bit of a creative, different way, and that is through a motivational candle. So if you were to envision a candle that really resonates everything about you, Allison, what would it look like by color and quote? Well, the color would definitely be green, which might be surprising because it's not my brand colors at all. And my quote, I think a lot of people are going to go, what on earth is this? But once you get to know me, you're going to understand this quote. And my quote would be, don't be like Loki. And I can definitely expand on that if you'd like. (laughs) You totally have to. (laughs) Please do. (laughs) Yeah. So you know that I'm an Instagram coach and I know so many women, especially entrepreneurs and product-based businesses, they spin their wheels on Instagram, how to grow their business and their brand. So a lot of people, when they work with me, they will learn that I am a huge Marvel fan, more like a Marvel nerd. And my favorite character, my favorite villain character is Loki, hands down, my all-time favorite. So I always say you can love Loki in the movies because he's a trickster, he manipulates, he copies, but you can't be like Loki on Instagram if you want to grow your brand. You have to be your authentic self. So don't try to improvise. Don't create something that you want your image to be. Don't try to anticipate that you'll attract more followers by being a certain way. Just get on and be who you are. Is that what you mean? Yes, absolutely. Because Loki is known to mimic other people and transform. And we can't do that on Instagram if we really, really want to make those connections and grow our business. Well, and I think a lot of people do. They get freaked out about social media overall because it's going out to who knows who, you know, is going to see Mm -hmm. it. And so you try to say, okay, how do I position myself in the best light to the people that I want to attract? And then what you're saying is the more disingenuous you become, you're actually going against what you're trying to create in the first place, which is a community. Yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing, Sue, we all start off that way when we're on a new social media platform. So when we take Instagram, for instance, what happens is we are watching other people that are very similar to our niche or what we do in the world. So we will fall into that trap of consuming so much content, right? And we look at these people and go, oh, they're successful. So maybe that's exactly how I need to show up. And at the end of the day, it's really not going to work for you. You really need to get crystal clear on why you're on Instagram or any social media platform in the first place and really just get in tune with your own brand and the way you want to show up and your own authenticity. It'll show up better online on your social media platforms when you do it that way. That's interesting. And we're definitely going to dive more into that. I have to tell you, Allison, that as I was thinking of, well, what topics do I want to cover? What questions do I want to ask based on where your expertise is and all? I just was thinking to myself, if we had done this interview last week, you would probably be saying something different than you're even going to say this week because things keep changing so fast. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Share with me first how you decided that Instagram, well, social media overall, but specifically Instagram how that was going to be your platform of focus. So in the beginning, years ago, I always knew that I wanted to build a business. I never liked the idea of working a nine to five. I knew that kids were going to be in my life and they are. And I really wanted to be that fully present mom. And so I wanted to build a business. And in the beginning, I actually started with a product-based business where I was actually selling personalized Disney autograph books through Etsy. That is how I started my journey. And so I wanted to get the word out and I started using Instagram. And as I kind of went through that, I was discovering that just blasting pictures of my products on Instagram was not working. So as the years unfolded, I actually didn't want to do the autograph books anymore. I really wanted to get into blogging. And that is how Boss Lady and Sweatpants came about, where I wanted to have a blog. And I really thought in the beginning it was going to be a mom blog of raising kids, how to build a business. But it really just fell into the social media space because I was on social media trying to figure it out for myself, falling into Instagram, just learning everything I could about Instagram 
following the gurus, taking all the classes. And that is just really how I honed in to the Instagram space and really figuring out how I could use this tool, this marketing tool to build my brand and how I can stand out, even though there are so many other people that do the same thing I do. I knew that there was space for me and I allowed myself to take the time and to really hone in into my brand and what I wanted to stand for and then figure out how I'm going to put it out there on Instagram. I love it. And I love that explanation as well, because with people who are listening here, you guys are going to agree with me that there are other people who make pampering products like sugar scrubs or lotions or jewelry. And so just like you're saying with social media, there are other people doing Instagram, but they're not doing it the way you do it. I think that's kind of circles back to this whole idea of individuality on the social media platforms too, because there are other people who are creating the products that we all make. And the only way we can be different and stand out is to show our personality. Yes, our products might have some unique qualities too, But that personality overlay is the only thing that people absolutely positively can't mimic. Absolutely. And we've talked about this before here, Allison, and we've talked video and all of that. And I think people understand it, but actually getting to the point where they're applying it seems to be the challenge. And I also know that a lot of people spend so much time and just feel like they aren't getting anywhere with the platform. So... Let's talk through some of this if we can. And I'm not Mm -hmm. sure if we want to start right in the beginning about Instagram or where we should start, but I'd really like to tackle this question. And I'm not talking about having something go viral or like any of that stuff. I'm just talking about steadily building an audience with the right people coming in. Maybe you can give us some tips or something about how to do that. But where do you think we should start with this conversation? I get the same question all the time, Sue, and it's hard to just give one answer for so many different people. I would ask your audience, why are you on Instagram in the first place? So first we need to identify your Instagram objective. Maybe your Instagram objective is to build brand awareness, or maybe it's to build community Maybe you want to drive traffic to your website. Maybe it's an Etsy store or an Amazon store, or maybe you want to grow your email list. I want to ask you a question. I think the obvious first answer for everybody is going to be, well, it's a way for me to get more sales. And I think this may be where the whole problem starts because you're jumping from not knowing somebody to thinking one post would convert to a sale. And what you were just saying here in terms of your demonstration of different goals that we can have is it's not always necessarily selling. It's Mm -hmm. a step towards the sale. Would you agree? Yes. So let me put it this way. Instagram is not a sales platform. Instagram is a connection platform. So your Etsy store, your Amazon store, that is your sales. We have to make a shift in our mind. We have to make a mindset shift that we cannot approach Instagram in a way to sell something. We have to approach Instagram in a way to help and serve people. When we make that mindset shift, that is when you will grow your brand, your presence on Instagram. It's not about selling. Selling comes later. Selling comes naturally. It's all about connections first. It's all about serving and helping. Even though we can sell from certain posts, you can tag a post and sell. Are you saying that should not ever be your primary purpose overall for your whole account? It might be for a particular post, but overall for the account, it should not be, right? Yes. So then let me see if I can remember the types of strategies and reasons why you would be on Instagram that you had mentioned. So you may want to grow your list. You might want to get people to know you, you know, discovery. I've always thought of Instagram as a place for discovery for people and then deepening a relationship, right? And then getting over to those sales platforms at some point. Would you pick only one of these or a couple of these? Because I feel like all of these are important for a business. They are all important. But what happens is when we try to do all of those at one time and we are just blasting out different types of posts, you actually end up confusing your audience. 
That's what happens. So I always recommend that you focus on a specific objective or goal for the next 60 to 90 days. That way your content can be very concrete and you're building the know, like, and trust. All right, let's do this. Can I present to you a specific type of person and we'll walk through then what they should do? How does that sound? Yes. So although this might not apply to everybody who's listening, I think some of the concepts you'll be able to make extensions with. But let's go with someone, Allison, who has an Instagram account. They have 100 followers. Okay, so I mean, a nice amount, but it's, I don't know, relatively small, I guess, when you look at all these people with thousands and then that whole target of 10,000 followers and all of that. So they have 100 followers. They got on Instagram because they knew they should. Instagram is what everyone's talking about. And since it's connected with Facebook, it's decided that they were going to start their Instagram account. Okay, and they've posted randomly. They've posted, I'm going to just be honest, they've probably posted their product and product and product and product because that's all we in the beginning know or think we should be doing. And they're not getting any traction. Their Instagram account really hasn't grown. They got 100 people kind of in the beginning because friends, family, extension of friends, groups they're in, that kind of thing. But now it's been stagnant and they're just frustrated. So let's work with that person because I think I know there are a lot of people who are listening who are in that situation. What do we do? We sell a product. What are we going to sell? We sell pottery. Let's go with pottery. So this is my situation. I don't know what to do. So the first thing I guess I should be doing is figuring out what my Instagram objective is. But I want to sell pottery. So what do I do? Help! Okay, so I'm just going to assume it's a female. I'm going to call her Sally. Oh, good. Sally. Yeah, Sally sells pottery. (laughs) Sally sells pottery. The first thing that Sally needs to do once she's established her Instagram objective. So at this point, I think she would want to build brand awareness. She only has a hundred followers. You can only sell so much pottery to one person, I would assume. So at this point, you really want to build some brand awareness so you can expand your audience. So once Sally focuses on brand awareness, now she needs to move to who is her ideal client? Who does she want to serve and help? Who does she want to expose the pottery world to? Most likely it would probably be maybe females 35 and over. I'm assuming here. So the biggest mistake that I see on Instagram is their bios. Because a lot of us being entrepreneurs, we are multi-passionate creative beings. So we think that our Instagram bio needs to be all about what we do, what we sell, and all the different things that we do. The problem is when we make our Instagram bio about us, it becomes vanity metrics. And to be honest, when someone goes to look at your bio, they really don't care about everything that you do. They don't care that you're a coffee lover. They don't care that you own a dog. They want to know what's in it for them. So we need to make our Instagram bio about our ideal audience. And your Instagram bio has three important parts. You need to state who you serve, what is their main problem, and what is your solution. So Sally in her bio would have some sort of I help statement. Because remember, we're helping and serving our audience. We're not selling to them. We want to help them. So maybe Sally's statement might be, and I'm just really throwing this out in the wind, like I help women jazz up their homes. You know, what would be in the pot? Is it just add some spice to an environment? Yeah, like it would be something like that. Like I help women spice up their homes or jazz up their homes or something through custom pottery and whatever else Sally might do. So maybe it's custom pottery or different size pottery. So I would have to work specifically with that person to really look at their store to see what they are. But that is kind of the main formula to your Instagram bio is to have that sentence. If you were to look at mine, I have a sentence in there. And it always starts with I help because I want to help my audience. So a person reading that go, ooh, custom pottery. Oh, I need to jazz up my home. I love pottery. That is how you're going to attract the right people to you is you need to audit your bio first. Because when they go to your account, that is the first thing they see. They're going to read that bio. So you need to have those three parts. 
who is your audience? Who are you helping? What is their main pain point or problem? Granted, they might have several problems, but what is the main overarching problem? And then what is your main solution, your overarching solution? So it's I help, who's your audience? Maybe it's to overcome, gain, achieve something. And then how do you do it? It's through or by your solution. Yeah, your product is your solution. All right, so I want to summarize where we are up to this point. And if you've not thought of your Instagram account like this before, or even if you're further along than the 100 followers like we talked about, it's always nice to recheck everything. So what's your purpose for being on Instagram? Let's say to stick with Sally, hers is brand awareness. Now, what does brand awareness mean? So that will be just getting the name of your company out there and what you stand for, like the vibe of your business and all of that exposure, because people can't buy from you unless they know you. And then your ideal client. I would say, Allison, that a lot of people who are starting off have to guess who their ideal client is. They start, like Sally's making her pottery, and she knows in the beginning who she's planning on making it for. But then when she actually starts going out to craft shows and selling or starting to get customers online and selling, that might change from her initial idea of who they were going to be over time. So once you are in business for a longer period of time, you get more savvy about who the people are that you're attracting. So when we then go and talk about the bio, and this is why I wanted to interrupt this flow, Allison, for just a second, is that if you haven't looked at your bio for a long time or put your bio in the structure that Allison's talking about, rethink if your bio still aligns with the types of customers that you're attracting today. It might be time for an update. So I just wanted to put that in there. So we've gotten all this figured out. And we're still sitting here trying to help Sally, who understands now what she should do. And by the way, these are business accounts, not personal accounts. Right, Allison? So it's an Instagram account for business. And on Instagram, you can create as many accounts as you want. You just have to have different email addresses. And I wouldn't create a million because you're not going to keep up with them. But maybe at the most, one personal and one business, maybe, even if you have a personal. Yeah, and that's a big maybe. I have one account. I am the brand. Even though you are a product-based business, you are the brand. And the whole point on Instagram is to make the connection. So I wouldn't have a separate personal and business account. I would have one Instagram account. It's so much easier to manage. (laughs) So given that, though, what rules would you have about your account? If you only have one and you really are using it for business... Do you have any rules about what you would post and not post in that account? Well, here's the good thing is there are no rules because it's really what you're comfortable with. But what I like to do is guide my clients to creating what I call content categories. And these are simply your post types. Because a lot of times we can fall into the trap of just posting about our products all the time. And when someone looks at what you're posting all the time, and if it's constant pictures of your products, it just comes across as spammy. I hate to say it, you're going to come across as that sleazy car salesman and nobody wants to be pitched products. They actually go on Instagram to be motivated. They want to be inspired and they want to learn. They don't want to be sold to. So the best way to do this is through content categories. And you can basically just categorize the types of posts that you're going to create. And they can be something like lifestyle posts. It can be a behind the scenes post. I would rather see Sally, a picture of her actually making her pottery And maybe the steps she goes through, then just showing me a final photo of the pottery and then say, click here to buy. I would rather see her working because I can make more of a connection with another woman working on her pottery. Maybe she's got an actual brick and mortar business. Maybe she does this in her garage or basement. Like someone's going to relate to you better if they actually see your process into doing something. Another great content category is tips and tutorials. Maybe Sally can give tips on how to use pottery in the different seasons that we have, how to stage a room, how to change the mood or how to use them for parties, how to use them for events. Like there's so many other ways to teach people how to use the pottery in their home. What are the benefits to putting pottery in your home? 
I personally don't know, but maybe there are some benefits. Maybe there's some mood benefits to staging some pottery with greenery in front of a window. Like maybe it does something to our psychology. And then also inspirational posts. She can use her beautiful pottery images and then overlay a quote, an inspirational quote or a motivational quote. So there's so many different ways to showcase your brand without selling your brand. Does that make sense, Sue? It totally does. We've talked about this type of thing before, but I can't make the assumption that everyone who's listening today has been listening back through other episodes. So yes, it totally makes sense. Okay, so in terms of the content categories, we should create some different content categories so that then we're not always thinking every time we want to post, well, what do we post? These categories help align the content a bit, right? Yes. Okay, so that's good. So we have our content categories. And then when you talk about that this shouldn't take a lot of time, I think that's where people get stuck. They feel like they've taken so much time, but probably random posting versus what you're describing here, because here there's a strategy underneath the plan and the posting. But how do we get to the point where we're not spending so much time on Instagram, but we get to see a little bit of growth happening? We get to see that the objective is actually being fulfilled and we're moving forward. What are your little tricks and tips there? time. We all feel like it's so precious and it gets away from us so easily. And certainly on social, that happens. Allison's going to share with us what we should do right after a quick break. Yes, it's possible. Increase your sales without adding a single customer. How you ask? By offering personalization with your products. Wrap a cake box with a ribbon saying, happy 30th birthday, Annie. Or add a special message and date to wedding or party favors for an extra meaningful touch. Where else can you get customization with a creatively spelled name or fine packaging that includes a saying whose meaning is known to a select two? Not only are customers willing to pay for these special touches, they'll tell their friends and word will spread about your company and products. You can create personalized ribbons and labels in seconds. Make just one or thousands without waiting weeks or having to spend money to order yards and yards. Print words in any language or font. Add logos, images, even photos. Perfect for branding or adding ingredient and flavor labels too. For more information, go to theribbonprintcompany.com. I will share with you how I map out all of my content monthly and weekly in three steps. So the first step is at the end of each month, I will print out the next month's calendar on a sheet of paper, an eight and a half by 11, and I will look at the month. The first thing that I take a look at is if there are any events or holidays that I want to post about on Instagram. I will mark it on that day of the month. Next, I will look at my content categories and remember my objective, right? What's my objective or my goal for the month? I'm going to make sure I write that down on my calendar so it's front of mind. Then what I'll do is I will create my own consistency pattern. And here's something about consistency. And I think your audience is going to love this answer. You get to decide your consistency. Don't worry about what other gurus are saying. If they're telling you to post two times a day, seven days a week to get to 10,000 followers, forget all of that. Because the problem is if you feel forced to show up in a certain way, you're not going to show up authentically and you're not going to do it consistently because eventually you're just going to stop doing it because it doesn't feel right to you. I want you to show up on Instagram in a way that it feels right and aligned with your business and your brand. So if showing up four days a week in your newsfeed feels good to you, then that's what you're going to do consistently. Look at the calendar and just spread out those content categories throughout the month. And that's what I do. I will write down, maybe on Monday, it's going to be an inspirational quote. Maybe on Wednesday, it's going to be a tip and tutorial. So I will fill in the calendar with my content categories at that point. Does this make sense so far? Sure does. So now you have the whole month mapped out. And this is something that you can do under 20 minutes. So at the end of the month, you now have next month's content mapped out, ready to go. So at this point, I will sit down one day a week. Normally, Fridays for me is my content creation day. On Friday, I will sit down and look at that calendar. And I will look at the next week. I will then create the content for that specific week. 
So if I have four posts that I need to create, I will do them at that time where I will open up Canva and create any graphics that I need to, pull some photos that I'm going to use that I already have on my phone. And I use a scheduler. I use Tailwind to schedule my post. That's when I'll upload the photos. I will write the captions, put in the hashtags, and I will schedule it for the following week. That way, when I show up next week, my content is done. All I have to do on Instagram is engage with my audience and be fully present and intentional. I'm not worrying about what I'm going to post because I've already planned it. So you batch everything in one day. This is your plan. You know the certain number of days a week you're going to be posting. Then whether it's once a week, twice a month, so you do two weeks in a row or two weeks at once, whatever. So you sit down and you intentionally plan it all out and get it all set and scheduled. And then you don't have to look at it again. Yes. That's excellent. And many of you who are listening already know I have that program, Content for Makers, that will fit nicely with what Allison's talking about here and give you some specific wording for your posts, too. So by structure or by different categories, for example, like you're not going to use these exact things necessarily, but it gives you the idea based on your industry of what you should do. So makes it super easy. I think the point is, Allison, people just taking the action and doing it. What do you say? So the implementation part can be tricky. So I think you have to just start somewhere. And when you map out your content and decide what you're going to do, and I always say too, when it comes to Instagram, because a lot of people are like, oh, it's the newsfeed, it's Instagram stories, it's video, it's reels. Start with one thing, because if you're not consistent right now, there's no way you're going to be consistent with doing all the features on Instagram. So start with one thing that is going to help you get consistent and actually implement. And if that's creating posts for your newsfeed, then do that. And once you feel really consistent with that, then you can add one more thing to it. But don't try to do all the things at once because there's just, I couldn't do it. I had to start with the one thing and then just build on it and build on it. And when you stay consistent, you will build that momentum. And you'll see after six months, after nine months of your own consistency pattern, you will grow. Well, what do you say about like the whole thing right now is if you're going to do anything, do reels. Because supposedly that gets you so much visibility and followers. And then I also hear if you're going to do posts right on the feed just directly, then do carousel posts because those will perform better for that organic visibility. You hear things from all over the place about what to do. What do you say to that? Like, how do you keep on top of it and do the things that are going to have the most impact? So right now, Instagram Reels and Carousel Posts will get you the most visibility, reach, engagement, because that's what Instagram is favoring. But that doesn't mean that you can't still grow with newsfeed posts. That is never going away. You still need to build the know, like, and trust. So even though you might get the visibility through Instagram Reels, that doesn't mean it's your ideal audience. And how are they really going to know what you sell or do if that's all you provide is Instagram Reels? At first, they might be entertained by you, but then after a while, they're going to wonder, well, what do you do? Then they're just going to unfollow you. Well, and honestly, I know it feels great when people have a million followers, but if they're not someone who would buy your product, it feels good. It makes for social credibility, I guess, but it doesn't really help you in terms of your business growth because you're not bringing in any sales. They're not your people. Yes. You want quality followers over quantity. Don't worry about getting to a certain number of followers. Don't worry about getting to 10,000 to get the swipe up feature. That does not matter. And honestly, you can take a look at some people on Instagram that have over 30,000 followers. But if you look at their posts and they only have maybe 20 likes and six comments, that is not quality. They maybe bought them. They're bots. So we have to be very careful when we look at others and we assume that they're successful. We assume that. But we really don't know anything about their business on the back end. You know what else I heard recently? Tell me what you think about this. Is that organic visibility, in other words, when people 
I'm saying this to people who are listening, Allison, not to you, of course. But when you put up a post, the number of people who are going to see it is based on all the algorithms that you hear all the time. And not everybody who follows you is going to see it in their feed. And that's really not what I want to dive into, but what I've heard is that interaction and engagement to your individual posts as a percentage of the total gets you more reach. So if someone has 30,000 followers, but 200 people respond to a post, let's say, they're not going to get as much reach as somebody who has 1,000 followers and 200 people respond or engage with that post. So it's the percentage of your total following that helps reach expand. What do you say about that, Allison? In a nutshell, yes. There was a lot there. And here's the thing. I don't worry about reach and I don't worry about percentages because, again, I think we just need to simplify the fact that Instagram is just a marketing tool and it's just in your wheelhouse of tools that you're going to use to build your business. When we get stuck on the vanity metrics, then we're going to try to change what we're doing to increase a percentage. And like I said earlier, that is when our internal little Loki egos come out. And again, we're not just focusing on the serving and the helping. That's when now we start to focus on the sale. So I don't pay too much attention to percentages and vanity metrics. The only thing as far as insights and metrics that I pay attention to is which posts gave me the most reach or engagement in the last 30 days. And I look at those posts and I look at what the photo was, what did I say in my caption and what was my call to action? And I will repurpose it into something new. You will repurpose that same post or you'll do more of the same or both? I'll do more of the same. But to be honest with you, I could take the same caption that I did 30 days ago and just use it with the new picture. Nobody would know. Nobody remembers what anybody wrote 30 days ago. But if it performed well, I'm going to use it again. We'll talk about this then for people who aren't as familiar with how to look at your metrics. So first off, that's why we say you have a business account, because that's the only way you can look at anything. You don't analyze your account. You have to be on a business account. But then where should we go to look and what should we specifically be looking at? Okay, so when you're in your account, you can go to your profile, your account, and you're going to see in the top right corner the three lines that people call them the hamburger or the three lines. And you're going to get a menu. And I think it's like the third item down. It's called Insights. And when you choose insights, it's going to give you an insight overview of your audience, of the content you've shared. So when you scroll down to the content you've shared, you can actually click on your post. And here you have the option at the top to do a search. I think it automatically goes to the last year, but I always like to look at the last 30 days. And when I look at the last 30 days, I like to look at different things. I like to look at the reach. How many accounts am I actually reaching? I also like to look at my saves and my shares. Because if people are saving and sharing my posts, that tells me that the post is very valuable to them. So I'm going to recreate those because I really want people to save and share. Because when they, first of all, save it, they're going to keep looking back at that post. But when they share it, they've most likely shared it to their Instagram stories, which now opens up your post to a whole new audience. And that's another great way to grow. So creating shareable content is a really great way to grow your account. And when I mean shareable content, that's creating lists, creating carousels, tips, tutorials, infographics. People are going to share and save that kind of stuff. Do you feel like you have to tell people in your post copy to save it or to share it? I have done both and I have not seen a difference. So I don't think you have to. I guess it just depends on your audience too, if they know. Because I know for a long time, people didn't even think about sharing. They just kept it. And let's talk about the value of sharing, because this is another thing I think when you give first, it's always nice and sometimes you get back. But let's talk about the value of sharing other people's posts that you think are valuable. Do you think that's a good idea? I do it all the time. Absolutely. Tell us in detail what you do. So if I like someone's post, I will, of course, like it. 
I will comment on it and then I will share it to my stories and I make sure in my stories, I will actually use the tag feature, the tag button and tag them in it because now Instagram does not alert you. So you actually have to tag them in your Instagram stories. That is like the biggest thank you that you could ever do to somebody. And what's so nice is if someone shares my stuff and tags me, you bet I'm going to go to their account and support them. I'm going to go like and love on their post and find something that I know my audience would like and I will share it. Again, it goes back to making connections. What do you think about reposting someone's content on your feed? If it's done correctly, I do this all the time too. There's certain people that I really love their motivational quotes. So I will repost it and I will make sure that they're tagged. And I will put in there that this post credit to so-and-so or a picture credit to so-and-so. As long as you tag them, I think it's fine because you're getting credit to the original post. And there's posting apps, too, that you can use that automatically also connect the credit back to them. So that's helpful. And those are great also for times when you don't know what to post on your feed. I've been planning to do more and more of that just to help spread the word of people that I think are fabulous and others should know about and helps them. And you do it because you want to give, but you're also getting because then that's a post for you and you're providing value to your audience then as well. So I think that that works really nice. So you had, as I was gathering information about you, Allison, you had one sentence that really intrigued me that I wanted to make sure that we covered. You say, what was one thing that you wished you would have known sooner about Instagram? And this feels like this is going to be really juicy. So how do you answer that? So here is my, it's almost like a two-part answer. Because I know a lot of people when they're getting started on Instagram, it can be a scary place. So first of all, we're consuming so much content. And that's when that imposter syndrome sneaks in. So it's a two-part answer. First of all, I wish I would have started showing my face more because you don't hide behind your brand. Don't hide behind your products. Don't hide behind your logo. The best way to make connections on Instagram is by showing your face, either through your newsfeed, it's a boomerang in your Instagram stories, it's in your reels, doing a live video, whatever it is. I think we need to be brave and we need to show our face because people do business with people. They don't do business with a brand. The second part of that answer is I wish I would have moved myself from a state of inspiration to a state of doing. And that goes back to that consuming so much content. Consuming content is good in the beginning, but we get trapped into staying stuck in that state of inspiration. You can keep downloading all the freebies. You can keep downloading all the calendars, the content calendars. But when you don't move to a state of doing and implement anything you've learned, you're never going to grow. So show your face and start implementing. Taking action, for gosh sake. Sometimes I think when you're doing that learning and that downloading and the analyzing and, oh my gosh, I can't do it till I have that content planner that I'm going to be getting at some point, all of that. You feel like you're taking action, but you really haven't taken any effective action that's going to get you any followers. You have to actually do it, not do the planning of it. So I would challenge your listeners to take a selfie today in front of a window and introduce yourself to your audience. Oh, I love it. What are they going to say? Give us the whole thing. No excuses. Yeah. Well, you know what? They can do uh, two truths and a lie. So they share two truths and one lie and their audience has to try to choose which one is the lie. Oh, I love that. Two truths and one lie. Okay, so you're going to take your phone. You're going to go into your Instagram account. Is this going to be a story, Allison? Or what are we making this so that it stays? You're going to make this a post. Okay, so we're going to take a picture, right? We want it to stay. It's not necessarily going to be a video, right? So just take a picture so you don't even have to talk. And then in the comments, you're going to say two truths and one lie. Which is it? And then you do your truths and your lies, whatever, which then initiates a response because you got to have people responding to you, right? Yeah. And the key is to respond back to them. Keep the conversations going. Okay. So this is really easy. So this isn't even going into the stories and doing a poll or talking or anything like that. Wonderful. Whoever does this, I want you to tag me and Allison on it so that we can go and look and we can see, okay? 
So you're going to tag me at Gift Biz Unwrapped. And Allison, what is your handle on Instagram? It's my name, Allison Scholes. Okay, and Scholes is S-C-H-O-L-E-S. Of course, there'll be links in the show notes. So I love when we have challenges like this, and this is a fun one. Plus, I want to know everyone's truths and lies. So when do you ever reveal the lie? How do you do that? If you're going to follow through on this game, how are we going to reveal the lie? I reveal the lie through each individual comment. So if they guess it, one of the truths, I'll go, nope, try again, and then see if they'll come back. Oh, fun. But then if someone reads the comments going down, they'll end up seeing it anyway. Right. But normally, most people don't. They will want to respond and guess because people like to give their opinions. Or you just wait a day or two and then make a comment with what it is, something like that. Very fun. Allison, tell us a little bit more about your business, the services that you provide, and how people could find you if they want to talk with you further. Sure. So I am basically your Instagram coach and a podcaster. So you can listen to my podcast. It's the social media for mompreneurs podcast. And then on my website at bossladyandsweatpants.com, I have a ton of freebies and resources on there. You can get into Instagram coaching with me. I also do group coaching, one-on-one coaching. So there's a lot of options on my website. And then of course, I would love for everyone to connect with me on Instagram at Allison Scholes. Perfect. Yeah, because that's what we're talking about after all. Wonderful. Well, this has been very interesting, and I really appreciate your going along with me to help out Sally. Taking somebody who's in that position and giving us some very concrete steps that they should be taking along the way to start seeing some movement with their Instagram account. So it's been marvelous. Thank you so much, Allison. I appreciate your being with us today. Thanks for having me. Who's going to take us up on the posting challenge? Two truths and one lie. Remember, if you do it, to tag both Allison and myself and me using the Gift Biz Unwrapped handle so that we can see and share it forward, getting more eyeballs on your business. Remember, this Saturday is the first episode of our new test airing time. I've told you now, so it's not a secret. But... Here's a clue about the episode topic. It's all about the secret. And it's a good one. I can't wait for you to listen. As always, thanks so much for spending time with me today. If you'd like to show support for the podcast, a rating and review would mean so much to me and helps the show get seen by other makers. So it's a great way to pay it forward. Also, make sure to follow the podcast so then episodes are automatically downloaded to your phone. It doesn't cost a thing, and then you don't miss one either, particularly now that our air dates are changing. And now, be safe and well, and I'll see you again next week, which is really starting Saturday, on the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. I want to make sure you're familiar with my free Facebook group called Gift Biz Breeze. It's a place where we all gather and are a community to support each other got a really fun post in there that's my favorite of the week, I have to say, where I invite all of you to share what you're doing, to show pictures of your product, to show what you're working on for the week, to get reaction from other people, and just for fun, because we all get to see the wonderful products that everybody in the community is making. My favorite post every single week, without doubt. Wait, what? Aren't you part of the group already? If not, make sure to jump over to Facebook and search for the group Gift Biz Breeze. Don't delay. Come join us in Gift Biz Breeze today.